Okay, got another pistol review for you today. Uh, this one is interesting because, actually like a couple of the others, it is the first ever uh, review of this on YouTube, at least in English. There might be some Japanese people that have done videos on this, although I haven't seen them myself. Uh, if you haven't bothered looking at the title yet, which is a bit weird, it's the Western Arms Beretta 84, also known as the Cheetah. And I received this today, actually, second hand. Uh, Western Arms are a pretty well-established uh, airsoft pistol manufacturer. They've been making stuff for at least 20 years. Uh, they, they're definitely one of the classic manufacturers for good quality pistols. Uh, they used to be really the king of pistols. Um, uh, it's kind of the same time as KSC. Uh, KSC were making good pistols. Um, this was before Tokyo Marui really came along and stole the market from them. Uh, yeah, I was about to get around to doing a review of this TM 1911 Series 70, but I got this in the post and ended up doing it for uh, this Beretta instead. Anyway, uh, they're pretty hard to find now. They're not the most expensive pistols brand new. In fact, I was looking at a review from 2006 that someone had written, and they said that the average price for these was £55. Uh, which is pretty insanely cheap. That's about seventy, eighty dollars if you're um, American, which is really an incredible price. Obviously, since then there's been inflation and pistol prices have gone up massively, especially Western Arms. And I got this for around one hundred and forty pounds, which I was lucky to get it at that price. I think because it came with free magazines, and magazines are really the value um, in Western Arms mag, uh, Western Arms guns. This is what half the value is. Because, brand new, these will cost you 40 50 pounds. Uh, Western Arms 1911 mags, brand new, could cost you $100 easily. Um, obviously these aren't 1911 mags, these are uh, 380 ACP mags. But, um, yeah, just to point out, for £140, it sounds a lot for an old, small pistol. But um, there's a lot of value held in the magazines. So anyway, three magazines I got with it. I got this from Arnie's Airsoft. Um, there's a guy on there who's selling a good deal of... Western Arms pistols at very good prices. Uh, well, actually, there probably aren't many left because uh, <laughs> I bought one. I saw some others were sold. Anyway, on with the review. The uh, Beretta Cheetah series. I'm not like reading this in Wikipedia or anything, but um, just from memory, a series of small pistols. Um, I'm guessing manufactured 70s, 80s. I think they only stopped manufacturing quite recently. Um, there are a few different versions. Beretta 81 and 82 were 32 ACP guns. Uh, 83, 84, 85. This is the 84 are 380 uh, ACP guns, 9mm short, as you can see on the barrel here. Cal 9mm short, 380 auto. Um, so the 84 version, which is what I've got here, is a double stack uh, 380 ACP pistol. So it's not a thin magazine like. Uh, like with my KSC SIG 230 here, uh, you can see this is a single stack mag, um, would hold, you can see there, seven rounds in real life. Whereas this is quite an impressive 13 round capacity, but it's literally twice the thickness. So uh, something to consider, especially for real shooters, uh, maybe for concealed carry, you're going to need that extra slimness from a smaller gun. And that's what the Breta 85 was, was simply this with a single stack magazine. Although I quite like the idea of having a 14 round high capacity uh, conceal, concealable pistol because it is very small. So I've um, got this today. First thing that struck me is although I knew it was going to be small, I say it's quite a lot, is really how small it was. Um, rather than just like a chopped down M9, which is what it looks like, it's literally a scaled down version. If I compare it to a 1911 pistol here, standard sized uh, 1911. It, you can see it, how small it is in comparison. Um, it's not like, absolutely miniaturized. If I compare it to a Smith & Wesson J-Frame revolver, um, which is a popular concealed carry gun still in the US, it's, um, it's all bulkier. It is a lot bulkier in every way, but it's actually it's a similar size. It's not. In, it's not too far off. So it is. It's doable for concealed carry, but it's pretty fat. And that's the other thing that really struck me of it is um, the front portion of the gun's very thin um, and light, 
whereas all the weight and bulk comes in the back. It's got a very fit grip. Even though it's a very small gun, compared to a 1911, it's actually a few millimetres thicker, um, which I'm not sure if it's impressive or annoying. Um, I think it's pretty interesting. But if you've got large hands and you're worrying that a pistol this small would be um, hard to handle, it's definitely got a full-size grip. I've got small, medium-ish hands, and um, it's just about comfortable enough. If it was much fatter, I wouldn't like it, but it's, it's all right. You kind of expect it with Berettas. They all have that fat grip. Uh, Old-style Berettas, that is. Anyway, i go over some features. Being a Western Arms gas pistol, it is all plastic. Um, metal where it needs to be. Something you might notice is um, the huge variety of trademarks on it. As um, someone said in one of their reviews, it's almost a little too complete. Um, it's it's a little bit cluttered with the trademarks. It's similar to the Umarex ones where it says um, Western Arms has got uh, Beretta trademarks, their license and all that. So maybe if that was gone, it'd be a bit better. But they're certainly realistic. Western Arms do have a licensing agreement, or they used to anyway. You can see that it's got full trademarks. It looks really nice. It's very detailed. That's one thing I love about this gun compared to like a Glock 26 or something. It, this is just covered in details and things to fiddle with. It's really good. Anyway, um, it's always harder to cover a pistol because you can't really start from the front and go to the back because it's got bits everywhere. Uh, if we start with the slide, it's a very lightweight slide, very small slide as well. Um, really small. And if you compare it to another compact slide, it's actually shorter. Um, it's a smaller slide than most other pistols and very light as well. It's got the classic Beretta cutout. Uh, moves pretty freely and the thing that um, the thing that is a repercussion of the like, really really diminutive weight of it, of the slide, not the rest of the gun, the rest of the gun is quite heavy, it's the slide that weighs virtually nothing. It's, um, it's got pretty much no kick. You get a very fast snappy blowback but it doesn't actually move the gun at all. And it feels like I'm about to go out of gas, so there you go, finish it off. So I can uh, dry fire. As you can see, it's a double action pistol. I'll get around to the trigger mechanism later. Anyway, slide, very light plastic. Um, it definitely seems tough enough. I use Abbey Ultra Gas, which I think could break quite a lot of Western arms. What I always look for to know a pistol is durable is this dust cover portion here. If it ends, if the slide ends like that, um, like a Glock does, without this portion, if it's just sort of cuts off there, all the guide rod um, does is batter against that until it'll snap off. When you've got a built-up portion here, you know that's probably going to last, and this seems perfectly fine with uh, Abbey Ultra, so happy using a medium power gas. Uh, got nice markings on the plastic barrel, calibre 9mm short. Looks good, and uh, as I said, it's an exposed barrel Beretta design. Uh, you've got a moulded in front sight, which is actually very close to the slide, it's it's interesting. Um, the, the white dot at the front is actually kind of built into the slide rather than just on the front sight post. It's all very compact. And then at the back you've got a metal unit with a uh, sort of a U, which combines to make one sort of dot. So yeah, I don't like it as much as a three dot setup, but uh, for such a small gun, it's definitely got good sights. Uh, here's a comparison to my SIG. You can see those sights there, those sights there. So they're, they're pretty similar. So yeah, not a whole lot to talk about with the slide. Um, seems strong enough for the purpose. Maybe not green gas, um, but a medium powered gas I think you'd be alright with. Other side, nice trademark as well. Okay, moving on to the frame. Uh, it's all kind of a heavyweight material, feels really nice. It's still plastic, but uh, again, it's very good quality. That's what you expect of Western Arms. Um, unlike a normal Beretta, the takedown lever is not on this side, in front of the takedown lever. Sorry, in, in front of the slide cat. It is on the other side. Uh, similar process though. Push the button on that side, switch it down on this side, remove the magazine, and off comes slide. Um, I was, might not grab my scales, I might do another video about it, but this this literally weighs about 100 grams, the very most. It's incredibly lightweight and you've got um, your metal unit in there. Actually, that's plastic. 
Yeah, looks like most of, that is interesting, most of the barrel, even the hop-up unit, seems to be plastic. Um, but again, seems strong enough. So yeah, very light slide. That's a little bit of disassembly, just make sure the barrel's back all the way and you can slide that back. Uh, moving up, we've got a slightly sort of unfamiliar looking takedown lever. You don't get one like this on other Berettas, it's joined to the trigger mechanism. Uh, locks back every time, perfectly reliable. Put a uh, gassed up mag in it. Just locks back as expected, so not much to say there. It is only on one side, like most pistols. You rarely get a double um, mag release, sorry, slide catch on um, airsoft guns. Going to the mag release, uh, it is reversible. If you replace, if you uh, take the grips off, you can switch it to the other side. So if you're left handed, uh, caters for that, as does the safety, which is a really nice feature. Uh, it's a double action pistol, as I said. You've got safety on both sides, but Unlike a 1911 safety, which is a single action pistol and it simply locks the gun, this is actually a decocker. Doesn't look like it, but uh, if the gun is cocked and ready to go, if you flick it to the safe position to cover up the red dot, it decocks the hammer, which is a really nice feature, I think. Then you can't shoot it, obviously. It doesn't snap back down. It's not a uh, dedicated decocker, it's a uh, mixture. An example of a dedicated decocker is this. Uh, you decock it. And as you decock it, it doesn't become safe, it doesn't put it into a safety mode, it simply lowers the hammer. Uh, whereas on this Beretta, it both decocks and puts it on safe, so then you can remove the safety and fire in double action. Uh, it decocks it to the half cock position. Although it's a very loose half cock position, you can actually, if you give it a little pull, you can put it back down to... Um, all the way down without it shooting actually that's good if you hit that it won't shoot the gun and then you can put it on safe so yeah you don't have to use it as a decocker if the gun is um is not in is not cocked you just push it it locks the hammer locks the slide just keeps it in a safe position so if you're going to keep it in storage you might want to do that make sure no one's going to shoot it um the grips are pretty good they're hard plastic with uh, beretta logos on Pretty much as you'd expect from a Beretta. Uh, again, they're very thick. I believe you'd be able to replace these with wood ones, uh, real wood ones if you'd like, uh, which I'm tempted to do. So I might get around to that sometime. Uh, but you, as I was saying, the safety is a really nice feature. You've got it on both sides, which makes it pretty uh, universal for use. Left-handed people, good pistol for them. It's a little stiff. It does require a lot of force to get it to decock, but... Um, a good example is, um, if I can do it with my little finger, I think that's a good example. <sighs> no, on that side I can't. I'll try this side because, you know, if you use a little finger, you, could, you know, it's a weaker finger. So it be a good example of how tough it is. I can just about. Um, so, yeah, it's not ideal. But um, if you're doing it with your thumb, you can do it fast enough. So, yeah, I think I've covered most of the features on it. Um, the trigger is OK. It's a little spongy. Um, but it's not too stiff, it's quite a nice double action trigger. Um, hammer, trigger, all these parts are metal, important parts. Um, so yeah, it's, it's definitely very well made. Uh, the hop-up is adjustable. I hadn't had a good experience before with Western Arms hop-ups, to be honest, because it uses a weird system of a grub screw uh, pokes upwards, which then pushes the BB up into the hop rubber, What well, rather than moving the hop rubber, it moves the BB into the hop rubber. Which, when I had a Beretta Cougar by Western Arms, it really didn't work. Uh, this is quite was quite a surprise. I just turned it up a little bit, and I was getting them skyrocketing. They were shooting at the sky. Turned it down a bit, and it's shooting pretty perfectly. Um, due to the limited power, I probably I'm probably going to put it at about 260 FPS, which is decent enough. Um, you're not getting incredible range combined with the kind of basic hop up, but you're going to be able to hit targets at about 20 meters. Um, Maybe up to 30 if it's a, you know, not over a, not a windy day and uh, you can get shots out. Yeah, it's definitely uh, competent for the size. Definitely better than a Tanaka revolver like this. Uh, I'd say it's even more capable than this KSC SIG, which I think is a pretty good pistol for the size. Um, so 
that brings me to magazine capacity. Um, how does it compare to a single stack design like this? Well, uh, the KSC, which I just had there, holds 10 rounds, which isn't very impressive. It's really got what you've got to expect for a compact single stack magazine. Uh, the Beretta, which I've already said, is a double stack magazine in real life and airsoft, which allows you to put 20 rounds in the magazine as well as one in the chamber. So for the size of the gun, 20 rounds um, plus one, I think that's pretty competent. Um, just to tuck this away, and you can see the size of it, just to be able to tuck it away in your belt or in a small holster, I think it's worth taking to a skirmish. Definitely quite a useful gun, um, which kind of surprised me. I was thinking it was just going to be a display piece, something to fiddle with, but uh, it's definitely one of Western Arms' uh, better small guns, in my opinion. Uh, something to keep note of with the magazines, if you're not used to a Western Arms gun, is that it has a the valve is covered, um, which means when it's out of gas, like yeah, like this one. So you can see this plate. As soon as it's out of gas, this plate. Sorry about that. Memory card got full, so I might have to upload this in two parts. We'll see. Uh, yeah, that valve on the back. It's essentially the way that Western Arms pistols work. Uh, rather than uh, the gun as it shoots, the slide stopping the gas flow, a part in the frame pushes it down. I don't know, it pretty much regulates the shot and means that the right amount of gas is always used uh, to finish the cycle. Uh, but what it means is that once the magazine is empty like this one, the valve will be covered and if you go to fill it, it's just going to come straight out. And if you don't know what you're doing, you could be standing there for ages wasting all your gas as it's shooting straight out the bottom. So make sure that plate is always pulled down and the valve is closed. Uh, besides that, they're very well-made mags. These ones are probably pretty old, judging by the wear on them. Uh, but they, they won't leak unless you don't take care of them. And um, as I said, they're very expensive. So if you find a good deal for uh, multiple Western Arms magazines, it's always worth getting them because they will retain their value. Uh, for quite a long time. So yeah, um, that's pretty much the talking part of this video done. I find that I don't get round to doing shooting videos as much anymore, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to load up uh, as many rounds as I have on me, and um, I'll take it downstairs and outside and we'll do a little bit of shooting and you can see uh, how it performs. Okay, for I might as well show you how to uh, load it up. Um, so, make sure the valve is not covered, just do your normal fill until it starts spraying and then we can load the BBs. Uh, there's no locking mechanism on the mags, it's literally just hold the follower down and uh, drop them in. Uh, what I'm using right here, I didn't have enough point twos to fill a whole magazine so I've got a mixture of point twos and point two threes. As you can see they're double stacked in the magazine. 19, that's 20, okay. So there's 20 in the magazine. Uh, it's tempting to try and get 20, uh, number 21 in there. Don't risk it. You might break the nozzle if you cram it in too much, but it'll take 20 BBs, which then of course, it's amazing how many people don't know you can just do this. Um, drop one into the chamber and decock it. So now you've got 21 BBs ready to go. Okay, so a four piece of paper um, standing close to, uh, well, probably almost 10 meters away if I stand back here. Let's try and fire some shots. Okay, so safety off. I can either shoot in double action if I want or single action. get a few of the gun. So you can see uh, very little cool down. And uh, you've got a decent amount of shots in here. Alright, so that was 21 shots. If we go have a look. Okay, so all uh, 21 shots landed in 
four inches from each other. Uh, four inch group at 10 meters isn't amazing, but remember I was standing up, uh, no rest for the gun, one handed as well, uh, whilst trying to handle the camera. So, um, wow, it's, it's impressive, I think. Um, I can't remember if I said it at the beginning, but it was a little bit of a gamble um, investing in this gun. I say investing because uh, for what it is, it wasn't cheap. Um, I was t wanted to save up for a new Toko Mori uh, Beretta M9A1 when one came up for sale. But um, instead I decided to get this, and I'm actually very pleased I did. Uh, because it's definitely one of the most capable pistols um, for, the, for its size. I, I prefer this, and definitely prefer it to a Glock 26, Toko Mori Glock 26, which I did have a couple of, actually I had a pair of them. Uh, I definitely prefer this, there's just so many features on all the trademarks and it shoots just as well. So um, I'd say if you see one of these up for sale and fancy something that's not only classic with a little bit of Western arms history, but uh, it's actually an excellent performer with lots of nice features, very well made. Uh, it's a perfect little pistol. Um, I wasn't so particularly excited when I first pulled it out of the box. Um, maybe because of the fat grips, which I don't like. and. Uh, it's, I don't know, from a distance it's a little bit boring, it just looks like an M9, but actually when you take a close look at it, it's got a lot of features that no other pistols have, and uh, it's definitely worth putting your money into if you can find one. Thank you for watching, we're going to have more reviews on the way. Um, that Tokyo Marui Series 701911, which you saw at the beginning, I'll definitely be reviewing that, and hopefully some more Western Arms pistols if I can find any for sale. Again, thank you for watching.